Welcome back again. We are applying some generic character controls and animations to a character in a sample scene. And as we do so, I want to take this time to explore Unity's new input system. We call it new. It's several years old now, but since they still support the old system and the new system, it's the new system. Recently in class, I suggested to one of our one of our student teams that they should employ the new input system in their project, and um, they were a little nervous about that because they didn't have much experience with it, and they were afraid it was going to be uh, potentially a lot of work to convert everything to use it. So let's use this opportunity to explore the new input system. So the first thing we need to do in order to use the new input system is add that package. It does not come in by default. So let's see, this is my packages in my project. And we can see I, I don't have the new input system installed here. So we're going to go to Unity Registry. And yeah, there it is, input system. You can use the search bar now to find the input system. And we'll just install that. At this point, Unity is going to realize that you're switching from the old input system to the new input system. And in order to do that, it has to reboot the editor. Say yes. And we're back. So uh, the next step is you, know, you need to go to your preferences. And under external tools, make sure that registry packages is enabled. It was not enabled by default. Uh, I enabled that a little bit earlier today. Uh, so make sure this is on because we just added a new package from the registry. So when you click that, regenerate your project files. And uh, let's open our, our character controller script now. Here it is. And you can see this is our old version, which is using input dot, input dot get key, which is the old method um, uh, of controls. Okay, um, let's put some character controls on our character. So I'm going to add player input. I'm going to add a player input component onto my assassin character here. And we will need some actions. Unity's new input system has many ways to go with this. Let's go with what... Uh, I'm going to say is the most basic, most obvious thing that they want us to do, which is to go with this actions. And it doesn't have any actions. So let's click here. Um, oh, you know, there's no actions to select. But there's this button, create actions. And if we click it, it will give us a, a default set of actions. Let's put this in the scripts folder, I guess. Um, I'm going to call it player actions go. And it creates for us this default set of actions. And what is in here? Let's start with there's a move set, and the WASD keys are already bound to it, as well as the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard, and also the left stick of a gamepad, all, all bound for us ahead of time. And we don't have to set any of that up. So I'm liking that. Um, let's use that. OK, so that's going to be that. We just need to modify our character script to read from those actions instead of from the keyboard. So we're going to start with, uh, let's add a using for that. Input system. And uh, that was a player input. M player input. Player input. Gimme. And let's use the same technique to grab it so we don't make our designers hook it up for us. We'll just do it automatically. Player input equals get component. Player input. OK, cool. And now, right here, instead of reading from the keyboard, we want to read from, I don't know, the player input. All right? so. If null is not m player input, then I'm going to say, how about, um, so let's back up a little bit. Uh, I have the player input. I want to read from the player input. 
this move action. So I got to get the move action from the player input. So let's get that. That would be m player input dot get action or no action map. What is it called? Actions actions dot find action, and then I give it the name. And it's called move. And that's going to return for me. You know, I can just use a var. Let's use a var. Uh, move action equals. I'm going to say if you got one, then I'm going to say vector two move two d equals move action dot, and I just need to read from it that get value get get parameter value get uh, maybe let's get parameter value value. No, I don't think that's right. It's uh, something value. Read value. Read value. That's the one. Read value vector two. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to read the data out of there, and I'm going to say move dot x equals yeah move to d dot x move dot z equals move to d dot y. Okay, and so then I can continue using my old system of X and Z unaffected. I just deleted the keyboard inputs. I don't need those anymore because the, the default player action should already have that in there. And now you'll note because I've just, I have this intermediate variable that I'm filling it in, all the rest of the code should be correct already. Um, that's really all I should need to do. Let's see if this works. Okay, hitting the W key. WASD keys work. And now something I did not have working before, because uh, I was just reading the keyboard, controllers weren't respected, but now they are. And that is how simple this is. Um, <clears throat> so, I, if you're planning to support gamepad controllers, I strongly advise you immediately switch to the new input system. Um, it solves the problem of different types of controllers, and whether it's a controller or a keyboard, you know, I'm using the keyboard now, I'm using the, key, the controller now, I don't have to go into the options menu and turn them on and off. It's fine. So there you go. Uh, that's the that's the new input system all installed. Let's stick a pin in that one, and uh, I'll come back in the next video, and we will talk about the next thing that we wanted for this scene, which is a follow camera, a camera that follows around as the character moves. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.